How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to the San Jose Sharks franchise mode episode number 18 headed into the 2027 year number five postseason. Now in the last one the San Jose Sharks went on an incredible run in the second half as we marched our way back from a 500 record to win our first President's Trophy in our franchise mode series and the first since the Sharks I believe won it in 2008 or 2009 that year ended up being a first round exit in the postseason so looking to definitely build on that but it was an incredible 55 22 and 5 season here for the Sharks we scored over four goals per game on average more than a half goal per game more than anyone else we we're allowing 2.84 per game one of the lowest in the NHL and that was thanks to the incredible the outrageous the world breaking performance of Philip Lindbergh it was Lynn sanity here in San Jose at 79 overall Philip Lindbergh was called up from the AHL. He had great numbers down in the minors this you know, through 22 games this season. Previously, good numbers, but nothing like incredible, incredible. Like good low goals against average. His save percentage was decent. Here in 26-27, he was 18-2-1, crazy record. We said, hey, let's call him up. Dostal's not doing well. Allmark's not doing well. And he went 31-4-1 with three shutouts, a 9-20 save percentage, and 2.46 goals against average through 36 appearances in his first NHL season at the age of 28, coming from Pittsburgh, where he was drafted 197th in 2019. He came in the Jason Zucker trade that we made back in year number one. Between the NHL and the AHL, he went, what, like 49-6-2 with four shutouts between the NHL and the AHL this season? Just wild numbers from Philip Lindbergh. And you know what? Even Linus Allmark backed him up. He did pretty well because through the first half of the year, as you can see here in a comment that I shared over on the EA NHL franchise subreddit, when I really put the numbers together, he was 7-7-2 seven, seven, and two through the first 34 games of the season with an 886 save percentage and 3.34 goals against. But then through the next 48 games, he went 5-1-1 one, one in his seven appearances. Not a ton of ice time, but a 948 save percentage in those appearances and a 1.29 goals against average. Really good bounce back numbers from Allmark once there was less pressure on him. So Dostal, Allmark, sub 900 save percentages, whatever. Get Lindbergh in there. We go 39-7-2 in the last 48 games. Plus, I know I'm doing a lot of recap, but it was just such a great season. The forwards, Bushnevich, who was on pace for around 80 points, ends up scoring 106. Connor Bedard, 105. Eklund, over a point per game. Jonathan Drouin, career highs in goals, points, everything. 39 goals and 83 points from him, second in team scoring. Chaz Lucius, over a point per game. Hurdle, 68 points. Burakovsky, we picked him up at the trade deadline, our one big move as well. He ended up playing, what, 19? Yeah, 19 games for us. He scored 13 points. It was a plus 10. So a great pickup for us right there. We also had Cody Glass, 44 and 69 on pace for 50 plus. Cole Lynn, Logan Couture, the captain with 10 minutes of ice time per night, 77 overall, scores almost 20 goals and almost 40 points. Bystet's rookie season, 35 points as a fourth liner, and down the list we go here. Carlson on pace for a great year as well, 50 plus. He was injured for a, a couple of months at one point. So really good season here in San Jose, and we want to build on this headed to the postseason because year number one, out of nowhere, it was a Cinderella Western Conference final run. So round three in year one. Year two, we missed the postseason. Year Year three, we go all the way to the Stanley Cup final and lose in five. Year number four, last season, we lose in round number one in six games. So round three, miss. Cup final, round one, and now it's year number five with a President's Trophy under our belts. A crazy end of the year. 9-1-0 headed into the postseason. We're taking on the LA Kings in round number one. They went 41-34-7 and seven on the year. It's going to be a big... Uh, the rivalry continues of the 2023 draft class. Bedard versus Michkov as the Kings passed on uh, Connor Bedard to take Michkov, who is now an 84 overall 22-year-old. This season, he had had 65 points in his rookie season. He spent some time in the AHL before coming up. So 65 points for him in his rookie season. Franchise potential with Byfield and Fiala on the first line. Kopitar, Kempe, Mathieu Joseph on the second line. Velarde, Turcot, Kaliev on the third stacked. Kupari, Pinelli, and Fajimo on the fourth. Really good forward depth. 
Defensively, Brand Clark at a 90. Sean Dursey at an 84. Okay, but then everyone else between an 80 and an 81. Gran, Salo, Korzak, and 36-year-old Ryan Ellis. Between the pipes, they have 42-year-old Brian Elliott. So hopefully no EA Voodoo Magic back at us. As a 42-year-old, he went 37, 24, and 3. 911 save percentage, 2.70 goals against. For an 80 overall, come on, ridiculous stuff. Backed up by Garen Bjorklund. Scratch, they have Jordan Spence as an 84. That's a big loss for them on the, on the blue line. And Akil Thomas as a 79 overall forward. So we definitely have our work cut out for us. It's not going to be an easy first round. We were steamrolling teams in the second half of the season. And that's why I called last episode. You just got to see it to believe it. Ridiculous stuff. Great thumbnail. A lot of love on the thumbnails. You're seeing in the comments at the beginning of this episode. Thank you for all that. Always happy to do my best to deliver on those. Let's dive into the comments quickly and get into the postseason. Because hopefully it's going to be a nice long run. Nothing too much in the comments. Not really any major suggestions. Aaron Thompson says, GM data with the my this touch can't wait to see what this team can do in the playoffs as far as moves i think you're good love what couture and carlson are doing in their last season now let's go out there and get them that cup and that's mostly what those what the majority of the comments were saying thank you aaron not a lot of things to change fingers crossed for the veterans in their last season couture is not coming back Carlson could come back, but not at that price tag. And so unless something changes, he's not coming back. The future is very bright, but we also want to try and do right by our veterans here in 2027. They've stuck around for a while. We got a Stanley Cup final a couple years ago. We know what this team can do in the postseason. We saw in the second half how much we can just dominate games. Like, you know, at the end of the season, we're scoring over four goals per game. Ridiculous stuff. Cheating Heel saying, this game is so broken. Why bother with high rating goalies, right? Of course, from now on, let's just go for the low 80s or lower, I guess. What a turnaround and what a season from 28-year-old career AHLer, 79 overall Philip Lindbergh. This is ridiculous, but hey, I'll take it if it means we can put the money elsewhere. That's the thing. If Lindbergh can stay, at least be a backup for the future. I don't know if he can maintain this level of play. We throw in a guy who's on an ELC. That's, you know, we're 2 million on two goalies as opposed to five, six, seven plus. That'll give us a lot of flexibility elsewhere in the lineup. Finishing off, it's do or die as most of our free agents will most likely not be coming back. There will be a lot of hard decisions that will need to be taken in the offseason. So let's finish strong. Go Sharks! Thank you, my friend. Finishing it off over in the Discord server with Dabrowski Diego who says, Wow, what a year! This was some turnaround by the Sharks and with the season ending, here are my thoughts. Philip Lindbergh completely dominated the NHL, destroying Lucas Dosal as we traded him to keep in Lindbergh. He exploded out of nowhere like Linus Allmark with Boston this year. This man better start winning awards because he went 31-4-1? Insane. Completely. You, know, you gotta think that he gets some Vezina votes in there, right? This has to be the greatest turnover in hockey history. It's up right there with the Blues in their Stanley Cup run, right? A few years ago in the real world. Going from 15, actually we were 16-15-1, to 55-22-1 and in winning the President's Trophy. Getting Lindbergh has to be the greatest move in Data 782 NHL 23 history. While for NHL 23, I think I would agree, probably it's up there. For channel franchise mode history, I'd probably say it's in a top 5, top 10 move. Hopefully we can see it come to fruition in the postseason though. Last episode, I said we should trade Carlson, but I believe that him getting injured was a good thing, showing us how we could go without the all-star D. Now he's healthy, now he's here, hopefully he just contributes all the more. Also with the forwards, Andre Burakovsky. I have no words for him other than he was a good rental. I'm still in shock about Jonathan Drouin too, a career high. Bushnevich came out of nowhere with 106 points, surpassing the projected 80 to 90. Connor Bedard performing Mario Lemieux style points. We already knew how Bedard would perform and he proved excellent. I have no other words or comments entering the post size. We just need to stay in put and keep everything together like we did this regular season. Let's go Sharks. With those words, let's dive into the postseason, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for all your thoughts and all your love in the last episode, which was a doozy. It definitely one that we enjoyed simulating through. It was a joy to have. Headed into the postseason, it doesn't mean anything if you can't perform, because remember, they don't ask you how you got to the dance. They just want to see what you do on the dance floor. First line, the forwards fully healthy, Lucius, Bedard, Bushnevich. Second line, the heartbreakers, Eklund, Hurdle, and Drouin. 
Third line, Burakovsky, Glass, and Lind. Fourth line, Couture, Bystet, and Benoit Olivier Guru. Defense, now we do have some injury, well, some injuries, as in just one injury to Essa Lindell at the moment, but it, I think he's back in game three or four. On defense, we see the first pair at the moment going to be Rodin and Carlson with a plus five, Bouchard and Kniezev on the second, Bjornfot and Pickering on the third. A lot of good restoration stories on this Sharks team. Lindbergh, Glass, Drouet, Bjornfot. This guy who was a career AHLer for a few years now, hadn't played in the NHL since 2022, comes up to San Jose, plays 51 games, scores five goals, 12 points, is a plus 12. Look at you! Look at you, Tobias! former first round pick in 2019. So we're doing all right. We're doing all right. Of course, Lindbergh will start the postseason, but we won't be afraid to turn to Allmark. I'm not saying it's a short leash, but I'm saying if things were to go badly, we wouldn't just, you know, we wouldn't lose by a ton and then say, keep Lindbergh in there. If we were to be down like back to back eight, nothing losses, knock on wood, just saying, I wouldn't be afraid to turn to Allmark because of the good numbers that he put up. But by far, hands down, no question, Philip Lindbergh is our starter headed into the postseason. Uh, we have Luke Cunnan as our 13th forward, and hopefully Lindell will be back ASAP. I think it's by game three. So nothing else to say, ladies and gentlemen, headed into the postseason. We have high, high hopes, trying to get it done for the veterans. It's such a great end to the year. We're coming in just blazing our way into the postseason. As always, this video is well over an hour, hour and a half plus long. That doesn't mean much. It could be that we lose in round number one and it's just a black screen. I don't want to spoil anything, especially in such a great year. So if it does end up that the video is done after 40, 45 minutes and it's just an hour plus of a black screen, I'm definitely going to make this a longer video because a deep run is expected. Please, I would appreciate if you just let the video run for a little bit. It helps with the performance of the video. You can just minimize it, let it run in the background. But I'm not going to spoil this episode and give you a 30-minute thing when we you know, we know and we're hoping for a long run. I don't want to spoil it like that. And it's worth with the video not performing as well that you can enjoy and react with me. Game 1, Round 1, Year 5, 2027 postseason in the Shark Tank in San San Jose, Battle of California, first period, 1-0, Jonathan Drouet with his 40th of the year as a total, 39 in the regular season, first of the postseason, no one I'd rather have begin the postseason scoring than Jonathan Drouet, shots are 14-6 to six for the Sharks, we're up 1-0 after 20. Second period action, ooh, 2-1 Kings. Because, you know, as great as Lindbergh has been, no playoff experience. So I hope that doesn't become a major issue. Byfield scores with under three minutes to go, and then Mitchkov with nine seconds to go. Those are two backbreakers. Shots are 25 to 12, yet we're down by one headed into the third period against Brian Elliott. Let's go make a move back and forth. There you go, Jonathan Drouet avec son deuxième. That's two for Drouet as this game's now tied at two. Shots are almost tripled in our favor. And then Mats Rodin makes it three to two. Thank you very much. Ah, tie game, Byfield ties it up at three. Power play San Jose. Five Five on three, huge opportunity, and Tomas Hurdle gives us the lead once more. Our third goal of the period, we're up by one with five to go. Shots 37-17 with two minutes left in this one. Final minute, hang on tight, and the Sharks take game number one. Thanks to two goals from Drouet and the game winner from Hurdle on the power play. Shots and 39-17, to but we squeak out the 4-3 victory. Hurdle a goal and two assists. Drouin with two goals. Mitchkov, though, a goal and two assists against the team. Not the team that passed on him because we didn't, but against the team that could have had him because we would have gone Mitchkov ooh, if uh, Bedard went to uh, the Kings. Eric Carlson has back spasms, which will keep him out for like a month. Amazing. That's a tough way to start the postseason. This guy has been injury-ridden this year. So that means we got to call somebody up from the AHL, unfortunately. Who would that be? Would it be our rookie? Are we calling up our rookie here? Would we call up uh, Kalinin? Ooh, do we call up Boris Kalinin, who had a great year in the AHL, his rookie year, 18 years of age, medium elite, the fourth overall pick in 2026. You know what? Let's get a little bit of a showcase for Boris Kalinin. Let's see what he can do up in the NHL. This is always a great time to see a little bit from your youngsters during the postseason. Not going to burn a year of the ELC or anything. Let's see it. Boris Kalinin's going to be in the lineup. Let me fix this up quickly. 
All right, the lines are set. Rodin will play with Bouchard. Kniazev with Pickering. Bjorn fought with Kalinin, who has great chemistry and X factors. I can't wait for when he's on the first pair in the NHL. Kalinin and Rodin, a plus five. Ooh, baby, can't wait to get that. But Boris Kalinin, we're going to ease him into his first NHL game here. A lot of pressure on him. Not really, not replacing Eric Carlson, but a big hole to fill without him in the lineup. We saw that we had great success without Carlson. We can do it. But it still makes us a little nervous, right? I think I'm just going to best lines it down in the AHL because I'm still going to be playing with some things as time... Ah, except for... Uh, let me just keep you on the top pair. There we go. And Tongi up there. Okay, because now with injuries and stuff happening, like moving people up and down, they already got the majority of the season played, so not a huge deal. But there we go. Game one complete down in the AHL. We had a great season. Game one complete, up one nothing over the Kings. We are still at home, of course, in front of the home fans. We allowed more goals than I would have liked. Three goals on 17 shots, but it's still Lindbergh's crease. Absolutely. We scored four. Two from to do any three points from hurdle let's see how we do in game number two to go up two nothing in this series headed back to la first period two one sharks mishkov opens up but then the trade deadline acquisition andre burakovsky scores twice in this first period to put us up two to one after 20 shots 14 to nine in our favor big lead thanks to burakovsky on that third line second period five one drew on the power play connor bedard his first and bushnevich with his first as well shots are 25 20 after 40 and we're up by four huge 5-1 lead for the sharks that hopefully should be enough and kalinin gets his first one game one goal from the defenseman boris the latvian locomotive kalinin or uh, tomas hurdle makes it seven to one power play sharks get miza miza bring more let's go shots 34 28 final couple minutes and that'll be all she wrote. Up 2-0 in this series after two games. 30 save performance from Lindbergh, who just gets his feet wet in game number one and bounces right back in game number two. Two goals and an assist from Burakovsky. A goal and two assists from Hurdle. I am loving this San Jose Sharks team. Up 2-0 in this series. Headed back to LA at Crypto.com Arena with a big lead. Six points in two games for Tomas Hurdle. Is Lindell back? Yes, he is. But I think I'm taking out Bjornfod, actually. Kalin in one game, one goal? Hard to debate that, right? Let me see. Uh, Bjornfod, what did you do for me? Two games, negative one versus Kalin in one game, one goal, right? Easy decision in my mind. So let me fix up the defense and we'll continue. And there we go. So Lindell back to the top pair with Bouchard. I think I might go Rodin Kalinin on the second pair because it gets a plus five and Kalinin did so well in his debut. I might be inclined to do that because if I do Rodin Pickering, it's a plus one. And while I trust Pickering more, you might, I don't know, the chemistry, you know, there's some anecdotal evidence to, to, to suggest that chemistry doesn't matter in the postseason. But hey, it's a plus five. Let's give him a shot. I'm going to see what he can do. Boris Kalinin playing with Mats Rodin on that second pair with the plus five chemistry. Let's keep on rolling into LA. Esselindel fully healthy. Too bad we're missing out on Eric Carlson, but big piece of the blue line back in place. Headed into game three, up 2-0 in the series and looking to make it a 3-0 stranglehold over the Kings here in round number one in LA. First period, 1-0 Sharks. Andre Burakovsky, his third of the postseason. 16-5, more than tripling the Kings' shots through for the first period second period three to two all right so byfield ties it up bushnevich puts us up by one bouchard puts us up by two then mitchkov he's been very serious in this series cuts the lead to one shots are 32 to 12 almost tripling the king's shots through 40 minutes but we're only up by one headed into this third period power play kings early it's an extended one very extended May like seven minutes of penalty kill. We kill it all off, and then a power play goal of our own from Connor Bedard. But Brand Clark comes right back. One goal lead to one uh, once again. Four to three with seven minutes to go. Almost doubling the Kings' shots. Forty-one to twenty-two with four minutes left in this one. Final two minutes with a one goal lead. Final thirty seconds. We hang on tight for another one goal victory. Shots and forty-four to twenty-six. Who's taking these penalties? Uh, hooking minor followed by one of our penalty killers taking a high sticking double minor. Lovely. 4-3 the final. Another nail biter. Game winner to Connor Bedard who gets third star honors with a goal and an assist. And we now have a 3-0 series lead over the Kings headed into game number four. Six points, three goals, three assists through three games for Andre Burakovsky. Love to see that. 
Really love to see that. Let's on, end off this series tonight. Don't even bother bringing it back home. Go out on the town. Nice dinner on me tonight. Little afternoon postseason game in California. We're gonna, I'm going to bring everybody out on the beach. Let's just close this out. First period, 3-1 Kings. Ah, that's tough. Shots tied after 20 as well. The Kings came out firing. The captain, Kopitar, is not going down without a fight. Michkov, six seconds later, gets another one. Lucius, he's there. Thank you very much. And then Kopitar, the captain, gets another. We're down by two after 20. Second period now, 5-3. We're still down by two. Jersey makes it a 4-1 game. Glass says, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop the bleeding. Evan Bouchard says, let me get back in here as well. We're down by one. And then Fajimo with one second left. The fourth line scores we're out shooting la 34 to 25 or down by two headed into the third let's go top six i'm looking at you kalinen boris kempe makes it a six goal a three goal lead with their sixth of the night down by three with 10 minutes to go it may not be in the cards tonight to to just sweep through the kings they have some fight in them back at home and on their own home ice We'll have to end it back in San Jose, and that'll be it. Six through the final. We outshoot LA 40 to 36. 76 shots on net in this one. Kopitar, two goals, two assists. Kempe, a goal and three assists. Dersey, a goal and two assists. That's tough. We lose our first of the series. Lindbergh gets roughed up a little bit. Six goals against him. That's all right. That's all right. Let's go back home and just close it out there. We still have a lot of time to rest if we can close it out here tonight. No need to make any more changes. I'm very content with what we're doing. We're scoring three, four goals per game. That's all right, but we got to only be allowing one or two if that's the case. Here we go at home in game five. First period, one nothing. Tomas Hurdle, thank you very much. Outshot 11 to 9, but up 1 to nothing. Second period now, 5 nothing. That's what we want to see. Babe, why don't? Cody Glass makes it 2. Lucius makes it 3. Benoit Olivier makes it 4. And Tomas, with his second of the night, makes it 5. 24 to 20, the shots after 40, and we're up by 5. That should be all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. A round 1 victory against the LA Kings in 5 games. And after losing in the first round last season, uh, power play goal from Hurdle making a hat trick here in the postseason in front of the home fans. After losing in round one last season, can I finish my sentence? The extra point is good. 7-0. Bushnevich on the power play. Hold on. Another power play. Oh, this one's killed off. 8-0. Cole Lind. Welcome to the party. And how about we end it off with a 28-save shutout from Philip Lindbergh. He allows six goals last game. He says, hold on. I'm better than this. I am better than this. Shots end 37-28. A shutout for Philip Lindbergh and an 8-0 thrashing of the Kings. Hurdle with the hat trick. Burakovsky with four assists. And Cody Glass with a goal and an assist. Oh, bang. Galvin with so. That's amazing. 8-0 the final. 10 points in five games from Burakovsky. GG's to the Kings. Respect. But we were just too much for them to handle. They had a couple good games, but we came out just too strong. The scoring was too much. Poor Brian Elliott. 10 points in five games for Burakovsky. Nine for Hurdle. Bushnevich with eight. Glass Bedard with six. Duane Lucius, Hurdle, Eklund all with five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight players point per game plus. Wow. Bouchard with four. Lind with four. Rodin with four. Kalin in a goal and two assists. Look at him. Gru with his one goal. Kniazev with an assist and a plus eight. Pickering an assist. Only Carlson no points through one game. And Bjorn fought two. Lindell. Couture and Bystad also nothing. Huh. Okay. Lindbergh also 4, 1, and 0. Oh. Uh, what? Did he get the shutout? What did, how much did he play? 40. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. I, I understand. So Lindbergh there in game number 5 got pulled presumably due to injury after 16 minutes of play and then Allmark plays in 44 minutes makes 17 saves on 17 shots and gets the win and the shutout is that so interesting okay so great numbers from him Lindbergh not amazing numbers so I but he did have a shutout 4-1-0 with the shutout did they save the do they share the shutout is that it 892 save percentage 3.05 goals against average so it wasn't him who actually said, hold on, I'm better than this. It was actually Allmark who came in after Lindbergh had to leave, I suppose. Interesting. Am I forgetting something? No, no shutout. So that means they shared that shutout, Lindbergh and Allmark. 
Is that even possible? I didn't know that was possible. But regardless, Lindbergh, you know, a bit shaky, but he got the wins. He did what he had to do. And Allmark looking very good. We're ready to turn to him if needed. For now, boys, just rest up. We had so many great performances. Everyone, dinner's on me, and I'll see you in the second round. All right, so after about a week of rest, we're ready to head into round number two, fully prepared for the Calgary Flames, who took down the Edmonton Oilers in the Battle of Alberta. So no rematch with the Oilers, and it's been the first time that we faced the Flames in the playoffs this entire franchise mode series, I believe. They beat the Oilers in seven. Meanwhile, it's going to be Blues versus Avalanche in the other Western Conference matchup. Islanders, Hurricanes in the East, as well as Buffalo versus Tampa. All right. So the Calgary Flames team, we don't have much experience with them, but we do know, I'm not going to say it yet because who knows, but I do think we know who their starting goaltender is. Is it indeed our old friend? Let's check it out. There he is, Ilya Samsonov. Of course, who with us had an 881 save percentage, got traded, 896 save percentage in a full season. With the Flames, 901 wasn't great, but here in the postseason, 917 save percentage and 2.42 goals against average against a very good, good Edmonton Oiler team. So Samsonov's backed up by Markstrom, our old friend. Uh, Huberdeau, Lindholm, and Kadri on that first line, very powerful. Duby, Coronado, and Holly on the second, this prospect who was a... First round pick, third overall in 2025. Beauvillier, Lizotte, and Barbashev on the third. McMichael, Faxa, and Pelletier on the fourth. So, a whole team of uh, Quebecois with Hubert Do, Dubé, Beauvillier, Pelletier. They're definitely watch having uh, viewing parties at Le Cajon Sport and St. Catherine here. Matt Grizzly, Philip Hronik, Artem Zub, and even Ben Garden with ça, Jérémy Poirier. So you got Jérémy Poirier, you got Pelletier, Jonathan Huberdo, uh, Dubé et Beauvillier. Garde moi ça. Grizzly, Koronik, Shillington, Zou, Poirier, and Uyghur as the defense. All right, so it's a strong team. They had 48 wins on the year. They took down a very good Oilers team in seven. They're going to be hungry, but we are definitely more rested. They just finished up their series. We've been off for almost a week now. We're getting close to Eric Carlson being fully healed as well. Down in the AHL, we're through to round number two. Looking good, looking good. So here we are. Game one, round two in San Jose. Every, through this franchise mode series so far, if we've made it past round one, we've always gone to at least the conference finals. So we've never had a round two exit. Again, of course, knock on wood, but historically, we're a team that if we can get through the first little bit, we're good to go on a run. Let's see if that continues. Starting in the shark tank against the flame. Let's see if the water of the shark tank can douse, douse those flames. First period of game one, round two. Hurdle scores in the first shot. Ah, but then Huberdo and Lizard score two not long after. Shots 10 to 9 in our favor, but we're down by one after 20. Two goals and nine shots past Lindbergh. Second period now, 3 to 1. Lazar with his second of the night. Three goals and 17 shots past Lazat. Now we only have one on 16 past Ve Mr. Vezina, Ilya Samsonov. Here we go. Let's go. Third period down by two. I'm looking at you. Eight point. We have our eight point per game plus players out there. Let's go. Burakovsky's one of them. Thank you for putting your team on the our team on the back on your back. My goodness, down by one. We kill off a Flames power play. Five minutes to go, down by one. Out shooting them, and Benoit Olivier! The French Canadians are going mad between these two teams. 15 seconds, and we're headed to overtime. Bam, between uh, Drouet and Benoit Olivier and all these guys on the Flames, it's just madness on St. Catherine. Shots are 29-27 in our favor after 60 with a 3-3 game and two goals in the third period. We're headed to overtime here in game number one. Here we are in San Jose. First team to score puts their team, first player to score puts their team up 1-0 in this second round series. Lucius dumps that in, and Bushnevich picks it up. Bushnevich in front on the doorstep. Samsonov's going to grab that and hang on. Offensive zone face-off. Bedard versus Lindholm. Two first lines both out there. Bedard wins it back to Bouchard. Bushnevich scores! All alone! You can't leave him there! Pavel Bushnevich wins it in front of the home fans! And the Sharks go up 1-0 in this second round series. Great play off the face-off. Bedard wins it back to uh, Evan Bouchard. Bouchard, I'm not sure if he fanned on the shot, but Bouchnevich gets it all alone in French, front of the net, and he does not miss. Love this celebration at home as well. Bouchnevich 
Yeah, yeah, fans on the shot, and Buzhnevich gets it all alone. Samsonov is left sprawling for answers. Physically and emotionally, just sprawled out. Big win in front of the home fans, and right at the game two, the one nothing lead. Now, despite the 4-3 victory, that was another sub-900 save performance night from Philip Lindbergh, who allowed 3 on 27. So, I'm going to keep a close eye on that, because Lindbergh's been doing well, but, you know, Allmark also has great numbers. I want to keep an eye on that. In Game 2 at home, we squeaked out another one-goal victory. We can't have too many of those. I need those top six players to keep coming through. I want some offense pitched in from the defense. I also need Lindbergh to just focus, calm down, do what he did in the regular season, and just get us through these two home games. Game 2, Round 2 in front of the home fans. First period! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Hironik, Holly, Pelletier, and Shillington. Four goals on 17 shots. Allmark comes in after Lindbergh allows three goals in the first seven and a half minutes. Oh my goodness, we're down 4 nothing after 20. Wow, quite a hill to climb in this one. Might just fly through this game, actually. Second period, 6 nothing. Let's just get out of here with paper bags over our heads. 7-1 the final. Kniazev adds a goal. We get outshot 40 to 28. What in the world? Where did that come from? Samsonov first star, of course. Whoa. Whoa. Pump the brakes here for a second. Negative four from Lindell Bouchard. Yikes. Mostly the same players out there. A lot of players who were even plus minuses. More players were an even plus minus than a negative plus minus. That's very odd. Lindbergh gets pulled after allowing three goals on nine shots. Allmark then allows four on 31. Boy, I might give Allmark the start. His numbers weren't great afterwards, but Lindbergh, buddy, you gotta, you gotta figure it out. 7-1 loss in game two. Make it a best of five now, as this series is now tied at one. That doesn't bode well. Our, the one victory for us came by in overtime, and our one loss came by getting blown out. Got to make a little change here. I think I'm going to give Omar the start. Lindbergh, just rest a little bit, buddy. 878 save percentage. Take a little bit of a rest. Omar, 916, despite the, what, 847 last game. Lucius, two goals. Bedard, two goals. Bushnevich is carrying. Come on, boys. I need some goals in the top six. Eklund, no goals through six games, but he has the points. That third line is producing, at least. I got to get more ice time for Burakovsky, maybe. But it's just that he's been doing so well in that position. Maybe swap him out for... I don't know. I'm going to wait before I make desperation changes. Let's wait. This team's done very well. It's just one hiccup game. We're going to head into Calgary with this series tied at one. It's a best of five at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome. We split a game apiece in San Jose. Let's try and get at the bare minimum that here in Calgary. But of course, aiming to win both on the ro road and make a statement. After getting blown out 7-1, to one, let's come into the Saddle Dome with a chip on our shoulders. First period, 1-1 one, one game. Barbashev opens it up. Then Connor Bedard gets his third of the postseason to tie it at 1. Shots 12-9 Calgary after 20. Second period action now. 3-2 Sharks, thank you very much. Lindholm makes it a 2-1 game for the Flames, but then Hurdle ties it up, and Andre Burakovsky, who else, gives us the 3-2 lead. Shots are 22-20 for the Flames, but we're up by one, headed into the third period here in Calgary. Let's add to it, boys. Let's go. Let's add to it. I'm looking at William Eklund. I'm looking at Mats Rodin. I'd love to see them chipping in. Power play San Jose, killed off by the Flames. Under halfway to go here in the third period. We're being outshot by quite a bit now, 30-23. Three minutes to go with our lead still intact, but it's the final minute. Push! The power play goal on the empty netter. Thank goodness we got lucky there as Cody Glass gets an empty net power play goal. Shots end 33-26 for the Flames, but we win this one 4-2 the final. And Linus Allmark, first star honors with 31 saves. Thank you very much. Barbashev a goal, Burkovsky a goal. I think we're going to keep Allmark for the time being. We'll give him another one. His numbers have been good. 4-2 victory to take a 2-1 lead. 7 goals and 12 points for Tomas Hurdle through 8 games. Burkovsky's doing great. I think we're going to continue like that. We got we faced a lot of shots, but if we can only allow 2 or 3 and keep scoring 4-5... That'll be all right, but we got to make sure that that balance between the two is being kept intact. 
Carlson will also be back in the lineup soon, so we'll keep note of that. But Game 4 here in Calgary, looking to take a 3-1 series lead over the Flames. A big win on the road, a statement victory. The Flames are not going to be happy about it. Let's see which team comes out on top in this one. First period, it starts off with a quick goal from Cody Glass, who ended last game and starts this game. We outshot the Flames by double here in this first period, 14-7, up 1-0 through 20. Second period now, 3-0. Connor Bedard shorthanded, and Logan Couture, the captain, with his first of the postseason. Shots 22-14 after 40, and we're up 3-0, looking to take both games from the Flames on the road. But Lazat, who scored two goals back in game one, says, hold on, but then Jonathan Drouet says, forget it. 4-1, the three-goal lead is restored. Three-goal lead with 10 minutes to go now. Shots are 26-20 with eight minutes left. Power play San Jose, killed off by the Flames, but I don't think it's going to be enough time for them as we're up by three with just a couple minutes left, and that'll be both games taken on the road. Huge statement after losing 7-1 to at home. Shots end 30-21, to and we will win this one 4-1 the final. Bedard with the game winner, I believe, uh, shorthanded. Yeah, that's true. And Allmark, 20 save performance. Well done, Linus. Well done! And we're up 3-1 to one in this series, looking to take it back at home. Is Eric Carlson healthy for this game? Central scouting? No. Okay, down the AHL. Head coach replace. Not healthy yet. No. All right. So hopefully we can end it here and get him healthy for the conference final. We don't want to count our chickens too quickly, but we're on the brink of winning this series. Since losing 7-1, to one, we've outscored Calgary 8-3. to three. Let's keep that up here in game number 5. And let's do what we did last series. Five games, make it, you know, just get it through. Five games, get it through. I like that, um, that pattern. Let's go. Period number one. Yikes. 4-1. Kadri power play. Holly power play. Then Coronado and Lindholm like 15 seconds later. Thankfully, Bushnevich puts a stop to it, what, 15 seconds after that as well. Shot 16 to 10 for the Flames through 20, and we're down 4 to 1. Come on, Linus! Down 4 1. The Flames not going down without a fight. Second period. 4 to 4. There we go, boys. Eklund with his first of the postseason. Bushnevich, and then who else but Burakovsky? Thank you very much. We're back in it. 4 4 after 40. Shots 26 25 for the Flames, and we have a tie game with 20 minutes to go. The final 20 minutes to decide, can the Sharks get to another Western Conference Final, or will the Flames live to fight another day? Power play, Calgary, killed off by the Sharks. Halfway through, power play, San Jose, killed off by the Flames. This next one could be a game winner. Five minutes to go now. Final two minutes, do we have a hero? Going to overtime. Shots 36 to 32 after regulation. 4-4 game, headed to overtime. Game 5 overtime here in San Jose. A goal for the Sharks would put them through the Western Conference Final for the third time in five years. A goal for the Flames would send this series to six back home in at the Saddle Dome. Essa Lindell skating up the middle. He has a lot of room. Essa Lindell's a ballerina! But Samsonov gets the glove on it. Hironik up to Kadri now. Down the wing and into San Jose territory. Across the ice. Grizzly picks it up. Huberdo going across the body. Nice blocker save from Linus Allmark. Bedard back into his own zone. Here's Bouchard circling around and finding Lucius. Across the ice. Lindholm picks off that pass. Kadri now into San Jose territory once again. Dumps it in deep. Now we have Bouchard who slips away from his man. Bushnevich to Lindell. Esta Lindell once again splitting the Red Sea. Lindell! The turned aside from Samsonov. Lucius, Kalinin. Now here's Bedard. One time from Bushnevich. That's blocked. And Kalinin will get possession of that one. Change up, change up. Here we go. Here we go. Mats Rodin looking to split the Red Sea himself. Rodin with some space. All right. Go ahead. Oh, Bedard. Oh, excuse me. Eklund. I think that was turned away. I think that made it through as a big save from um, Samsonov. Excuse me. Kalinin over to Tomas Hurdle. Hurdle with Kalinin, gives it over across the ice to Drouet. And his one-timer stop from Samsonov, who will hang on. And Furkowski down the wing, slips by, not quite. Barbashev has it now, coming on the ice as the third defensive pair to face him. Gets it in front to Shillington, big save in the crease, and Allmark will hang on. First line now out for the Sharks against the Flames' fourth line. Maybe a mismatch here, 7.51 to go in overtime. 
Offensive zone draw. Bedard wins it back. Bouchard, that shot is blocked. In the corner now is Bushnevich. To the point, it's Bedard. Bedard, nice little move. Loses it to Pelletier though. Jacob Pelletier gets poked himself from Bushnevich, who gets back into Calgary territory. Bushnevich across to Lindell. Stopped by Samsonov, who makes the glove save. Second line out now. Tomas Hurdle at the draw. He pushes. Drouin gets it. Lindell, crazy overtime for him so far. Bouchard, Lindell. Eklund! Big blocker save from Samsonov. Faxa, board pinned. Fighting with Hurdle, who gets it to Lindell at the point. Puts it on net. Big save. A pad save there from Samsonov. Lindell with, what, four or five shots this overtime? Incredible. So at the first line out there. Here we go. Kalinin up to Bedard. Connor Bedard gets through one, gets through two, a bit there, Kalinin to Bedard, one-timer, blocker save from Samsonov, what an opportunity there. Bedard, Bushnevich, Poirier gets it out though, Coronado going up against Kalinin, he moves into center ice, Coronado gets through his, like two, three guys, oh my goodness, gets it on net but it's blocked. Pavel Bushnevich to Chaz Lucius, Connor Bedard, uh, why aren't you shooting? Love save Samsonov, Bushnevich could have had a great shot there. Now here is Uberdo over to Grizzlick, looking to exit their own territory. They can't. Grizzlick still getting uh, mugged a little bit there. Lindholm finally gets it now. Kadri loses it. Kniezev, come on, buddy. No, Kadri's pushing him. Uberdo, lots of space. Pad save, Allmark. Less than a minute to go. Big one timer save from Allmark again. Again, Kadri blocker save, Allmark. Let's go. 50 seconds left. Board pin behind the net. Four guys fighting for it. Uberdo gets it out. Allmark's going to hang on to that puck with 46.2 seconds to go in overtime. Defensive zone draw for Hurdle. Loses it to Lindholm. Hronik, Huberto, Grizzlick, Kadri, that shot's blocked. Hronik, can't get it through. Bouchard, get that up. There we go. Petsin! Away, Grui! Petsin! Drouet! Petsin! Glove save from Samsonov. Esselindel, less than 30 seconds now. Gets it back up to Hurdle. Here we go. Tomas Hurdle on net, big boy. Can't get it through. Hold on, nice pick there from Eklund. Over to Lindell. To Hurdle. Short angle shot. Low. Trying to bat it in from no angle. Eklund there. Lazat kicks it out. Eklund gets it to Drouet. To Hurdle! It's stopped by Zemsov. Point blank. Gives it out to Barbashev. Final seconds. Six seconds to go. Lazat. Zub. He's going to try to get something on net. Don't let him. It's pad save. Omar, thankfully. And that's the end of the first overtime. We're headed to double overtime after a very eventful period. The shots are 49 to 38 for the Sharks after 80 minutes of play, but we are still tied at four. Obviously, here we are in double overtime in San Jose. Nazem Kadri bumped. Lindholm, big save, Allmark. Oh my goodness, big save early on. Defensive zone draw, Bedard loses to Lindholm, Hronik, Kadri, Grizzlick at the point, down to Huberdeau, Kadri in the high slot, back to the point, Grizzlick, Hronik, Kadri across to Lindholm, great puck movement, Hronik, Lindholm, Kadri, blocked by Lindholm, uh, Lindell, excuse me, Kadri again, Lindholm, that shot goes wide, as I believe it touched uh, Bouchard, Kadri one-timer, I'm not sure if that's deviated off of anything, as that goes into the corner, Lindholm, down around the bend, here's Grizzlick at the point, Gets it back down to Kadri, Huberdeau. Let's go get it out, boys. Change up. Connor Bedard looking to exit the territory. Come on, what are you doing, Lucius? <laughs> Lindholm, thank goodness. EA mechanics, no brain from the AI. Here's Eklund now. William Eklund across to Drouet. Can't get a good shot away. And the Rodine across to Eklund. Lots of space. Let's go. Eklund down the boards looking for something in front. Zoom puts it in his own net and the Sharks win in overtime. Oh my goodness, have you ever seen anything like it? And the Sharks are through to the Western Conference Final for the third time in five years. Shillington into his own net, or was it Zub? Artem Zub puts it in his own net. What a way to end it. It's like when the Sharks put it on in their own net and Nabokov was in net uh, with the Avalanche Sharks. Was that the series? I'm thinking back. Oh my goodness, what a way to end it. And the Sharks are through, eliminating the Flames in five games in double overtime. Oh my goodness. William Eklund skating down the boards, tries to give a nice backhand saucer pass to Burakovsky. Zub hits off his stick, and then it's not going to Bur Burakovsky, but it's still moving forward. They just deviated off his stick. He says uh, he was trying to hit it behind the net. He wants to just... 
He didn't want to take possession. He just wanted to bump it out of Burkowski's uh, lane, out of his possibility of him getting a touch on it. And he puts it just through the wickets on Samsonov. And that is brutal. An all-time blooper. Shots end 49-40 for the Sharks. And San Jose wins it 5-4 the final to win this series in five games. What a series against Ilya Samsonov and the Flames. Felt good to get that one. I would have been pretty upset if we lost to Samsonov. Wow. 14 points through 10 games for Andre Burakovsky. 7 goals and 13 points for Hurdle. 6 goals, 12 points for Bushnevich. Bedard with 11. Eklund with 10. So after 2 rounds, we went from 8 point per game plus players to 5. Still good. I'll take it. Glass with 9. Drouet and Lucius both with 8. Bouchard 6. Lind 5. Rodin also with 5. Pickering 4, Benoit Olivier with 3, Kalinin 1 goal, 2 assists, 3 points and a plus 7 through 9 games. Can't wait to get him in the NHL next season. Logan Couture with 3 points, Kniazeb 2 points plus 9, Bystet 1 assist, negative 2, Carlson, I'm gonna, I don't know where he's going to fit when he comes back. Because Kniazeb has a plus 9, is he leading the team in plus minus? He, leading all defensemen in plus minus. Who's the worst on defense for plus? Lindell is negative six in eight games. He did have that one negative four game. That would be tough though. I don't know who comes out. We'll see whenever he gets healthy. We'll cross that bridge when we get there, which may be in like two minutes. Goaltending now. Lindbergh 5-2-0 and oh with an 878 save percentage. Allmark is 4-1. 4-1-0 oh with a 922 save percentage and 2.17 goals against average. So I think Allmark will keep the crease, at least for the time being, headed into the Western Conference Final, which will be against either Colorado or St. Louis. Avalanche currently up 3-2 in their series. So let's rest up. Let's get off that high of the big overtime victory in game number five. And let's see who our opponent will be in the Western Conference Final. In round number three, we will be facing the Colorado Avalanche, who went 42-36-4 on the season. Let's check out the playoff tree here. They took down the Blues in six games. So they beat the Coyotes in six, Blues in six, and now they face the Sharks, who took down the Kings and Flames in five games apiece. Over in the East, it's the Hurricanes versus the Sabres. Potentially the Hurricanes and the Sharks on a collision course for a rematch of the Stanley Cup Final of two years ago? Question mark? But Buffalo, Carolina over in the east, and, uh, San Jose, and Colorado in the west. Checking out the lines now. Let's see what Colorado has in store for us. Cedric Bobilev, uh, tw the 25th overall pick in 2025. First liner, only with five points, but a first liner here. Playing with McKinnon at a 96 and Rantanen at a 91. We've had both these guys in previous series. McKinnon with the Kraken, Rantanen with the Honolulu Huskies. Second line, new hook, Nicholas Backstrom at the age of 39 and Gabriel Laniskog. Third line, a 74-year-old Prokop, former first-round pick, with Victor Rask and Arturi Lekkinen. Fourth line, Kaut, Coyle, and Olafsson. Defense, they have 90 overall Bowen Byram with 95 overall Kale McCarr, 12 points in 12 games. Colin Miller and Samuel Girard on that second pair. Kale Clegg and Arthur Kolak or Cholak on the third pair. All right, okay. They have a few random 70 overall guys. Is it due to injury? And the Chuskin, 86 overall, who's injured at the moment. Okay. And uh, between the pipes, who does Colorado have? Uh, of course, I forgot. It's Capo Kakinen. Of course it is. Who's a 927 save percentage and 2.35 goals against average. Of course. Of course. So since he leaves San Jose with his 898 save percentage, he goes to Carolina and wins the Stanley Cup. In Colorado, he has not great numbers, but in the playoffs, of course, he becomes a different beast. 927 and 2.35 goals against, of course. What kind of contract has he signed on? 5.3. Backed up by 77 overall David Riddick. What a joke. So we got to beat all of our former ghosts here, the ghosts of goaltending past. As we go through Samsonov, and now we're trying to go through Kakinen. My goodness, who are the goalies over in Carolina and Buffalo? Anything we have to worry about over there? Just a quick uh, mention. Nedeljkovic and Vladar. Okay, don't got to worry about that. And Buffalo, Uko Pekalukunen and Gustafsson. Uko Pekalukunen, a monster this year in the stats. So this will be the last goalie we have to go through that has any sort of history tied to us, if we can get through them. So, Game 1, Round 3, Western Conference Final. Eric Carlson should be back for Game 3. I believe he's injured until the 19th. So two more games with how we're looking, then we'll reassess by then. 
both games at home in front of the home fans. We had a much better record on the season, but they've been solid through the postseason, the Avalanche have. Both uh, both of their series ending in six games, but both of ours have ended in five. So a little more rested, a little more confident maybe. So without further ado, it's game one of our third Western Conference Final in the last five years. So that's something to be proud of in and of itself, but we got to make it worth it, right? First period of game number one, 3-1 San Jose. Bushnevich opens it up, Newhook ties it right back, and then Tomas Hurdle with his team leading, what, eighth of the postseason? And then, or ninth, I forget. And Chaz Lucius, his third, making it 3-1, tripling the shots 15-5. Second period, 3-2. McKinnon brings it back within one. Shots are 25-17 for the Sharks, but we're leading the Avalanche by one, headed into the third and final period at home. Two-goal lead is restored thanks to Connor Bedard. Power play, Avalanche killed off by the Sharks. Well done. 12 minutes to go, out shooting them 30-22 to around the halfway point here. Power play, Avalanche once again. That's a huge kill kill with six minutes to go still hanging on to the two goal lead two minutes left in this one final minute and that'll be all she wrote 40 excuse me 34 to 29 the shots end in our favor and we win this one four to the final Chaz Lucius a goal and two assists Bedard a goal and two assists Bushnevich a goal and two assists things you love to see the top six came through in a huge way 15 points in 11 games for Bushnevich our new team leader and could be tied very well maybe tied uh, Eric Carlson fully healed, so he's actually back for game two, not game three. Now the question is, where would he fit? Technically, Lindell's been our worst, right? But I can't take him out. Uh, Kalinin's been great. Maybe it's Pickering, but he has four assists and it's a plus seven. How can I take Pickering out? I don't know, maybe Kniezev, but him too, plus 11. Tough call. I'm going to try putting Pickering on this side and Kniezev can move out for Carlson. I'm going to try doing that. Carlson, it's a zero for the plus minus. Uh, do we go Lindell Carlson? Let's do that. Let's go Lindell Carlson. And we'll put Bouchard on the third pair with Pickering to stack that perhaps. Bring a little offense down there. Let's try that out because Carlson... On his 50-point pace and everything, it's always been as a first-pair guy. He's only played four and a half minutes this postseason. Let's get him really into it with Lindell in the first pair. Give him his ice time. And then later on, we can play around with the pairs if we need to. But Knezev, he has been great. Unfortunately, just got to take him out at the moment. Let me fix the lines down here in the AHL. Okay, all of that taken care of. Headed into game number two of round number three. Still at home with a 1-0 series lead. Hurricanes up 1-0 over the Sabres. Big 4-2 victory. Goal and two assists from those multiple players in the top six. Eric Carlson back in the lineup. We are fully healthy for the first time since, what, game one of the postseason? Here we go. First period, 0-0. Shots 10-8 for the Avalanche after 20. Yeah. Heading into the second period now. 2-0 Sharks. Essa Lindell, who said, hey, you thought about taking me out of the lineup? I, I don't think so. First goal of the postseason from Lindell, and another one from Tomas Hurdle, who is just getting on to another level right now. Another Sharks veteran. Great to see him still performing in 2027. Shots tied at 22, but it's 2 0 Sharks headed into the third period. Two goal lead cut to one. Fourth liner Martin Kaup, but then restored by Pavel Bushnevich. 3 1 Sharks through five minutes in this third period. Now with 12 minutes to go, shots tied. Avalanche taking the lead 30 to 30 around. Still with a two goal lead with just a a few minutes to go here in this third period looking to take both games at home and head into Colorado with a 2-0 series lead and yes we will shots and 34 to 31 30 save performance from Linus Allmark first star honors for him a goal and an assist from Bushnevich goal from Essa Lindell 3-1 the final up 2-0 in this series 17 points in 12 games from Pavel Bushnevich free agent signing always love when those work out 1-1 one, one series in the East, and we're up 2-0, headed to Ball Arena in Colorado. Not changing a thing, not stopping for a second, full steam ahead, up 2-0 in this series. First period, 2-2 two, two game. All right, Drouin, hey, it's been a while. So opens it up on the power play. Girard ties it back up. N nine seconds later, Burkowski restores our lead, then Kaut ties it up less than a minute after that. 
2-2 after 20. Shots 13-9 for Colorado. Second period, 4-3 Sharks. Glass gives us the lead. Gerard second of the night ties it up. Then Eklund now gives us the 4-3 lead. Shots 25-20 for the Avalanche. But we're up by one after 40. Looking to take this third game and have a stranglehold on the series. Up by one in the third period. But Kale McCarr with his first of the series will quickly tie it up at four. Shots 30-23 to 23 for the Avalanche. They're pushing hard. They do not want to go down 3-0. Halfway through the third period. Outshot 34-27. Still tied with five minutes to go. Do we have a late hero? It's overtime, boys. Do we have a late hero with 34 seconds to go? Nothing. Shots end 38-30 for the Avalanche. And for the first time in this series, we're headed to overtime. Overtime here in Colorado. Well, look at the Jumbotron there in the Avalanche's arena. Ball arena. A goal for the Sharks would put them up 3-0 in this series, but a goal for the Avalanche would give them light, life. Hold on. Lindell scores! Essa Lindell! His second of the postseason! And it's a quick one to end it in overtime! Last overtime, or two overtimes are going to be jumped into. Lindell was all over the place, getting all kinds of shots on net. And now he scores goals, what, in back-to-back -back games? Essa Lindell, the hero in overtime, as we now have a 3-0 stranglehold in the Western Conference Final. One win away from the Stanley Cup Final. What a goal. Clutch performance from Essa Lindell. Bedard to Lindell, and the Sharks take it 5-4. The shots in that one ended 38-31 for the Avalanche, but we come away with the victory. I forgot to mention, another goal from Burkowski, former Avalanche, of course. So he's playing against his old team very well. 3-0 series lead for the Sharks on the brink of sweeping our way to the second Stanley Cup final in the last three years and the second of this five-year takeover of the Sharks so far. One win away. Boys, that's all it is. I can't motivate you anymore. Huge OT victory. We're healthy. We're strong. We are an unstoppable force. Let's take it on in Colorado on a, in away territory. My on and my in going back and forth. Game four with one win. All it's going to take. One win is all it takes to fall in love with me. First period, 2-0 San Jose, Drouet on the power play, and Tomas Hurdle. What a duo. What a duo. I don't even have anything to say. What a duo. Shots 11-9 for the Avalanche, but we're up 2-0 after 20. Two periods away from the Stanley Cup final. Second period, 3-1. Cole Lynn shorthanded to put us up 3-0. Then Backstrom on the power play gives the Avalanche some life. Shots are 26-18 for San Jose after 40. Up by two, head into the third. Up by three, the captain puts us ahead by three. And that may be enough to get us to the Stanley Cup final. Avalanche power play goal from Kale McCarr, up by two. Power play, shorthanded goal from Samuel Girard. Oh my, but goal from Jonathan Drouet. Currently, Logan Couture with the game winner, though. We're up by two with five minutes to go. Going back and forth in the pair, and Cole Lind may have just ended it with his second of the night. Six, three, Sharks, seven to three, Cody Glass. And we're gonna hop in to see the end. Oh, we can't even. With, oh, with three seconds, you're not allowed. That's too bad. But it's all right. Nothing to see, really. Would have just been a little handshake with Bill Daly. No problem. So we blow out the Kings to end that series 8-0. We win the series in overtime against the Flames. And now we blow out Kakinen and the Avalanche 7-3 in Game 4 to sweep our way to the Stanley Cup Final. Game winner in this one goes to Logan Couture. But we score 7 on the night. Two goals from Cole Lynn. Does that get him something? First star for him. Two from Drouet, a goal and assist from Hurdle. My goodness gracious, what a team this is. Five game series in round one, five game series in round two, four game sweep of the Western Conference Final. And for the second time in this franchise mode series and the second time in three years, the San Jose Sharks are off to the Stanley Cup Final. Get some rest, boys. Enjoy it. Just soak in the moment. Through 14 games now, we're back to having, what, five, still holding on to five point a game plus, point per game plus players. Bushnevich with 18, Hurdle, Burakovsky, and Bedard all with 17, 10 goals from Hurdle. Eklund with 15, 3 goals, 12 assists. Drouet and Lucius both with 13. Glass, 11. He's doing amazing. Shooting at 19.4%. But look at Burkowski shooting at 22.6. Colin with 8 and 14. Bouchard with 8 as well, but negative 2. Rodin, 7 and a plus 12. Lindell, 4 and a plus 1. There he is. Couture with 4 as well. Kalinin with 4 and a plus 9. 
Pickering four, Gru with three, Carlson three assists in four games and a plus five. Three assists in three games since coming back from injury. Kniezev, he's on the bench for now, up in the press box, actually. Bystet, two assists and a negative two. Bjornfot, yeah, of course. Goaltending, Linus Allmark, baby. 8, 1, and 0 oh, with a shutout. 922 save percentage and 2.31 goals against average. My goodness. He has been amazing. Ever since we traded Dostal, I don't know if it was the morale or something, but ever since we traded Dostal, he has been on another level. Boys, very proud of you. Take in this moment. We will be facing one of the Hurricanes or the Sabres for the 2027 Cup. That's, that series is tied at two. We don't know what's going to happen yet. I'd say put it out of your mind, relax, work out, eat well, and I'll give you the phone call when we know who we're going to be facing. And in the Stanley Cup final, I haven't looked. Will we be facing the Hurricanes for a rematch of the 2025 final? Or will we see the Buffalo Sabres? The 2027 Stanley Cup Final will be between the San Jose Sharks and the Carolina Hurricanes. A rematch of the 2025 Final where they won the Stanley Cup. They, I believe they won another cup on top of that. So they've been a dynasty here in the mid-2020s. But they definitely, we have something to say up against them. They beat us in five games in the Stanley Cup Final in 2025. They went 48, 28, and 6 on the season. They took down the Blue Jackets in 7, Islanders in 6, and Sabres in 6. We went 5-5-4. Five, five, so once again, we are more rested, maybe a bit more confident. We are very excited to be here once again. Couture, Carlson, they can taste it. Let's check out the Hurricanes lineup here. I'm sure very similar to their lineup from 2025 when they eliminated us. We know Capo Kakin in there. We already went through him. Looking at the Hurricanes lineup. First line, Teravainen, Aho, and Sveshnikov. Second, Jarvis Pavelski at the age of 42. Of course, 10 goals and 14 points from him. And Kotkaniemi. Third line, Anders Lee, Sharon Govich, and 89 overall Martin Nechas. So, uh, Shangovic, Shangovic, however you want to say it. The high overall players here on this third line. Pfft, 18 points in 19 games from him with 15.33 of ice time. Eberly, Colton, and Bach on the fourth line. Defense, they have Slavin and Pionk, Bear and Hedman. Wow, Victor Hedman. And Nimalainen with Mayfield on the third pair. Very well-rounded team. Goaltending is 84 overall, Alex Nedeljkovic, who found his way back to Carolina. 899 save percentage. Could we take advantage of that as a very high scoring team? Let's see if that'll be our one advantage in this series. 12 7 0 is Nadelkovic, backed up by Dan Vladar. Any injuries? No. Gunler, Flurry, and Ryan Suzuki as the healthy scratches here in Carolina. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a moment. What a moment. We found our way back to the Stanley Cup final. The last time we were here, we've dropped in five games. We know that this year, this team is something different. This team is something special. We have it within ourselves. Let's go out and take it, boys. I don't have much else to tell you aside from that. Look at the man on your left. Look at the man on your right. Think about our high-octane offense, our strong defense, the confidence that you can have of having Allmark between the pipes right now. Go out there, have some fun, and let's win this Stanley Cup. Game 1 of the 2027 Cup Final in San Jose against the Hurricanes. Rematch from a couple years prior. Here we go. First period! 1-1 one, one game. Drouet opens it up and Sveshnikov ties it uh, just three minutes after. Shots 14-6 to six for the Sharks through 20. Second period! 2-2. Two, two. Teravainen gives the Hurricanes the lead, but then Drouet, with his second of the night, ties it back up. Shots are 22-13 for the Sharks. We are tied at two. Both goals coming from Drouet. I'm looking for scoring by committee here, boys. Let's go. Don't let him do it by himself. Don't leave Allmark out to dry either. Let's go. Let's provide the offense. Get shots on net. Five minutes through the third. Nothing coming yet. No power plays. Very well behaved. Connor Bedard puts us up by one. 3-2 game halfway through this third period. Very well tempered at the moment. No penalties for either side. Under five to go. One goal game for the Sharks. Presumably a pulled goalie for the Hurricanes. And Hurdle adds the empty netter. 4-2 the final. Shots end 32-19. We only allow 19 shots from the Hurricanes. They score twice. But we do well to limit their shots. Two goals and an assist from Drouet, the hero. Hurdle, goal and an assist with the empty netter there. And William Eklund, third star, with a three-assist performance. 
one nothing series lead for the sharks headed into game number two at home i want to see just much more of the same down in the ahl we're in the calder cup final against the laval rocket the uh, canadians farm team 19 points in 15 games for Hurdle. Let's keep it up in front of the home fans. Game two after a 4-2 victory. Let's keep limiting those shots, but let's be a bit more clinical in our finishing. First period, 2-1 Hurricanes. Pavelski is 11th of the postseason, and Teravine in his second in as many games. Drouin with his third goal in two games. 13 to 10, the shots for the Sharks, but we're down 2 1 after 20. Second period, no scoring. Shots 26 19 in our favor. One of the few periods this entire postseason with no scoring. Down by one, headed into the third period. I'm looking, ah, Ethan Bear, former Seattle Kraken. Power play, Sharks! Killed off. I'm looking for anyone besides Drouin. Well, Drouin could do it too. But I'm looking for other people to contribute here. Halfway through the third. Down by one, down by three. Out shooting the Hurricanes by a ton. And a shorthand goal from Pionk. Lovely. So we'll drop this second game, unfortunately. Despite out shooting the Hurricanes 36 to 28, we drop 5 to 1. 5 to 1. Nadalkovich makes 35 saves. Let me see the plus minuses in this one. Negative, almost everyone had at least a, a negative one. The fourth line did not look great. Kalinin, Rodin, uh, Drouet, Pickering, and Lynn, the only non-negative players. All right, 1-1 one, one series, make it a best of five now. So through two games, it's a 1-1 one, one series with the Hurricanes outscoring us 7-5. to five. Headed back to the Hurricanes home arena at PNC Arena, June 1st, 2027. 1-1 one, one series, best of five. Let's keep doing what we've been doing, but that's uh, that second game, five goals against, that doesn't sit well. We've done well to answer after getting what that 6-3 loss against the Kings. We answered with a huge win the next game, right? So we've been answering well. But let's keep it up. We have not lost back-to-back -back games yet this postseason. It's our first loss since the loss to the Flames back in round two. So let's respond well here in Carolina. We know how to perform away from home. Let's do it on the road at PNC Arena. First period, 2-1 Sharks. Connor Bedard scores twice. Power play followed by even strength. Scott Mayfield getting one for the Hurricanes. Doubling their shots 16-8 to eight through 20. Up by one. Two goals from Bedard leading by example. Second period, Lucius gets one. And then another from Bushnevich. Nimalainen scoring for the Hurricanes. 2-1 in the first. 2-1 in the second. That makes it 4-2 after 40. Out shooting the Hurricanes 27-18. And we're up by two thanks to Lucius and Bushnevich. Third period now. Power play five on three. Let's go. Killed off. No. And then we're back to even strength. 5-2 to two, though, no matter. Essel Lindell gets his third of the postseason. He's been picking it up. Love to see it. Nine minutes to go. Power play Hurricanes. We kill it off. Power play Sharks. One more to close it out. And there it is. Lucius with his second of the night to make it 6-2. Bushnevich with his second to make it 7-2. Bushnevich following Lucius for the second time tonight. And that'll be it. Shots end 39-27. And we answer back in a huge way, just as expected. Whoa! Lucius and Bushnevich both with six-point nights. Two goals and four assists apiece. That has to be like a franchise record in the postseason. Four points from Bedard, two goals and two assists. Wow, they put the team on their back. There's one, two, three, four other players with one point and no one else with any points. Just the Lucius and Bushnevich show up there. My goodness, on that first line. Bedard as well, of course. So the first line carrying us. Plus four, plus five, plus five. Wow, huge win. We'll take it. The big boys, you know, let the big dogs eat. We let the big dogs eat and that's what happens. 25 points in 17 games from Bushnevich now. Uh, well, best lines it down in the AHL, whatever. And we are up 2-1 in this series. Looking to make it 3-1 and maybe win back at home here at PNC Arena. We've never lost more than one game in a series so far this postseason. After a huge 7-2 win, the Hurricanes will want to respond in front of their fans. But we've been able to hold responding teams down. Let's see if we can continue to suppress that here in game number four of the Stanley Cup Final. First period, 2-0 Sharks. Owen Pickering, followed by Connor Bedard with another one. My goodness, outshot 10-9, but we're up by two. 
Second period now, 3-2. to two. So the Hurricanes come back. Shvashnikov makes it a one-goal game. Bedard, second of the night. Four goals in two games for him now. Six points in two games. Restores our two-goal lead. Teravine on the power play cuts it back to one. Shots are 24-17 for the Hurricanes through 40, but we're up by one headed into this third period. It would be a huge win to go up 3-1 in this series. Let's add to our lead here, boys. Let's go. Five minutes into the period, nothing coming yet. Hurricanes still leading in shots, 29-23 in their favor. Halfway through the third period, hanging on to our one goal lead. Six minutes to go, shots 32-26. It's a quiet third period, back and forth in the shots, and Jonathan Drouet will put it away! 4-2 the final! Merci bien, the shots end 36-29 for the Hurricanes, but we hang on for the 4-2 victory. 34 saves from Linus Allmark, three assists from Pavel Bushnevich, two goals from Connor Bedard. Ladies and gentlemen, the San Jose Sharks are one game away from the Stanley Cup. After losing in five in 2025, they have a chance to win in five in 2027. After winning in five in rounds one and two and sweeping round three, at home in front of the home fans. Bring it down, bring it down. Bring it down, boys. Bring it down, let's go. Here we are in the locker room. We've been in this league since 1991. The 91-92 season. This is what, our 35th season in the NHL? Just the third time in our franchise's history that we're in the Stanley Cup Final. The second time in the last three years we've made it this far. President's Trophy under our belts. Western Conference Champions under our belts. One win away from our first Stanley Cup in 35 years of history. 35 years. Logan Couture, the guy's a 75 overall now. His, he's barely alive on that bench. He's barely at you know, one and a half star physical. But he's giving it his all. He's been here for 20 years. Drafted in 2007, two decades later. Logan Couture is one win away from hoisting the Stanley Cup as captain. Eric Carlson, 37 years of age, drafted in 2008, 19 years ago, has been in San Jose for what? This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine seasons in San Jose. Heartbreak after heartbreak after all these great offensive seasons. Essie Lindell, not the youngest uh, chick in the coop either, right? Rooster in the coop, whatever it's called. 33 years of age. Drouet, 32, comes to San Jose. Signs a 4 by 5 by 4.4. Rejuvenates and revives his career. Tomas Hurl has been here since 2012. 15 years. 33 years of age. He's one year, one win away. Cody Glass rejuvenates his career. Burakovsky comes at the deadline. Linus Allmark, 33 years of age, sub 900 save percentage, looked like he was dead and gone, rejuvenates once again. Philip Lindbergh, despite not playing much in the postseason, we would not be here without him. He's here as well at the age of 28, career AHLer. Look at all these stories. Look at your brothers. And think about the road that they've been on. 15 years, 20 years with this franchise. One win away. 60 minutes. 60 minutes on home ice in front of your home fans. Game 5, 2027 Stanley Cup Final. I leave you with that. Essa Lindell! The first shot of the night! We're here to play! We are here to play! Extended power play of the Hurricanes gets killed off. We're up 1-0 halfway through the first period. Controller down. We're letting it roll. Lindell, he has passion and quote to start off this game. Three. <laughs> Boris Galinin, his first career goal. The Latvian locomotive makes it 2-0 San Jose. Boris Kalinin. Oh my goodness, what a time to score. Shots 13-10 for the Hurricanes through 20. We're up 2-0. Tuna, oh, Jonathan Drouet, it's three nothing Sharks, power play Hurricanes, killed off, power play Sharks, killed off, power play Hurricanes, killed off. Halfway through this game, we are up three to zero. Five minutes to go, we're being outshot, oh my god, Chaz Lucius, 
We traded for him. First round pick from the Jets. What a well-crafted team. I have to say this is. Lucius, a first round pick from the Jets. We see him on the block. We make a deal as they want it to be contenders. Lucius, what a piece he has been. An integral piece in this puzzle. Shots are 24-22 for the Hurricanes. We are up 4-0. 20 minutes away. 20 minutes away, gentlemen. 20 minutes away. 4-0. Shots tied at 24. The Hurricanes pushing. There it is. Ethan Bear scoring one. We're up by three. Five minutes into this third period. We're being outshot. 29-27. Halfway through the third. Nima Linen makes it a two-goal game. Hurricanes are pushing. We're only up by two now with six minutes to go. Final four minutes. We're gonna. I'm going to hop in for the final three minutes here. Up by two with three minutes to go. Look at these stats. The Hurricanes beat us on paper in everything. Yet here we are. Lockdown defense, except. Let's do it. Coach adjustment. Three minutes to go. Up by two. Fourth line's out. Bicep wins it to Carlson. That's poked away. Gotta get the first line out there. We're in coach mode here. In front of the home fans. It's getting loud probably. I'm gonna get closer to the microphone here. Eric Carlson circles back. Gets it to Logan Couture, the captain. Over to Benoit Olivier. Logan Couture gets pushed off. Still has it. Gets it to Carlson, just over the net. Vistet now gets it to Couture, gets it to the point now. Carlson back to Logan in front. One timer is stopped by Nedeljkovic. Hedman, board pin, gets it over to Anders Lee. Anders Lee skating down the boards, hit by Lindell, broken up by Vistet. Here you go, change up boys, change up, get that first line out. Carlson, he's gonna stick, stick with it, give it to Lucius, who goes for the empty net, or didn't even realize that, he misses. 45 seconds to go with an empty net. This is it, boys. Anders Lee, final push. Down to Pavelski. Pavelski looking to establish a presence in the corner behind the net. Get it out, Bushnevich. She's board pinned. 30 seconds to go. Bedard in the corner. Kalina in the locomotive. End it. Chaz. Chaz. What are you doing? Finish it, buddy. Finish it. Chaz. Lucius finishes it. And the San Jose Sharks are up by three with 23 seconds to go in the Stanley Cup Final. We've done it. We have done it after five long years. Third round eliminated. Missed the postseason. Stanley Cup Final heartbreak. First round eliminated. And in year number five, with a, after being 500 through half the halfway point of the season, around the halfway point, power play here for the Hurricanes, whatever. After being around 500 around the halfway point, we march back. Philip Lindbergh gets us there. 100 plus point seasons from Bushnevich and Bedard. Possibly a Conn Smythe performance here from Bushnevich in the postseason. After 20 years, yeah, we get it. After 20 years, Logan Couture will raise the Stanley Cup as captain. Eric Carlson, after nine years in San Jose, will raise the Stanley Cup. Tomas Hurdle, after 15 years, will raise the Stanley Cup. Other veterans, Lindell, Drouin, who came to Montreal. The San Jose Sharks are your 2027 Stanley Cup champions. After 35 years, we have done it. Our mandate in San Jose has been met. After 35 years, the data five-year plan comes to fruition, and the Sharks are Stanley Cup champions. It's gonna go quick, right? Let me guess, there's no, ah, and Bedard, Bedard gets the con Smythe, wow. It's so quick, it's unfortunate. Bedard wins the con Smythe. Gary, take it away. Well, hello, San Jose! San Jose, I know you've been waiting for this for a very long time. And I'm so happy to call over the captain, Logan Couture, after two decades. It is your honor. Logan Couture skates over with tears streaming down his cheek. No! Why is Carlson there? Ah, oh, it's a glitch. And why did they give him the captaincy? I don't know why. Maybe there was an injury at some point. But Carlson raises the Stanley Cup. That's right, we'll give it to Couture right away. But Eric Carlson gets it first with a little glitch there. I'm not sure why. Battery's getting low. Carlson gets it first, but then we're going to give it right over to, of course, not even an option, right? 
Let's give it next to uh, Drouin. We'll give it next to Drouin. Logan Couture, not even an option, right? Drouin gets it next from Eric Carlson. 32 years of age. Left for dead from Montreal in free agency. Comes to San Jose. Scores almost 40 goals. Career year. And gets to win his Stanley Cup with the Sharks. Third overall pick. Thought to have been just maybe potentially a bust. Next, we're going to give it over to uh, Connor Bedard next. We'll give it to him. The franchise pillar. Let's give it to him. Ah, it's too bad. It's supposed to be Captain Couture with alternates. There it is, being Carlson and Hurdle. Bedard raises the Stanley Cup. I'm not sure why the captains are like that. I guess it was due to some injuries or something. Connor Bedard, the young franchise centerman, raising the Stanley Cup in San Jose. We still might have an option to give it to him, eh? Next, I guess we'll give it to Bushnevich. Eh? Last choice? Great. Let's give it to Allmark, actually. Let's get the goalie in on it. Let's give it to Allmark. I can't believe you can't give it to anyone else more than that. Logan Couture, I wanted to see him with the cup. It's too bad. But Linus Allmark raises the Stanley Cup. What a well-fought season. After being, once again, left for dead. Comes back and performs in the postseason. So many players I want to see with the cup. So many more. Lindbergh, Couture, so many others. But it's all right. We'll see them here with the cup. Gather around, ladies and gentlemen. Gather around. San Jose Sharks. 2027 Stanley Cup champions snap a picture it'll last a lifetime and now here's the new thing with the Stanley Cup yes beautiful we get to see this for the first time Stanley Cup champions there it is the Stanley Cup looking beautiful it's really too bad we couldn't get Logan Couture in there but we know he raised the Stanley Cup we know that he got it we saw him in that team picture there are all those names his name's on it Look at those names. Beautiful. Bjorn Fod gets his name as well. Boris Kalinin, a lot of uh, Cole Lynn, Luke Cunnan, who's been here the whole series. Lindbergh. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Logan Couture with his name, of course, as well. Bicep in his rookie season. All those names. Each one tells a story. Winning at 5 2 the final. Shots end 37 30 for the Hurricanes. All mark with a huge win to close it out. What a series. I can't believe we got scammed out of Couture being the captain, though. That's disappointing. I don't know. Was it because we scratched him for one game back at the beginning of the season? I'm positive I set the captains at the beginning of the year. We had scratched him somewhere in the season for a couple games. I don't know. But what a run we had. Five games in round one. Five games in round two. Sweep in round three. And Stanley Cup final winning it in five games. From President's Trophy to just carrying it through the postseason. Bujnevich, I'm surprised he didn't win the Conn Smythe with 28 points through 19 games. Connor Bedard gets it. Same amount of goals, but 26 points. He gets the Conn Smythe. I don't know. I think I would have given it to Bujnevich. We had Lucius with 24 and 19. Hurdle, 21 and 19. Drouet, 20 and 19. So we end with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 point per game plus players burakovsky what an acquisition at the trade deadline 17 points in 19 games from him we get him his stanley cup thank you for joining us for the ride cody glass 12 we get him his cup lind nine bouchard eight rodine in his sophomore season eight points plus 15 stanley cup ring lindell seven points colleen in six points and a plus 12 in 18 games coming to see him in the nhl next season Logan Couture goes out with five points in 19 games and a captaincy of the captaincy of a Stanley Cup winning squad. Pickering five points plus 13. Carlson five points plus four in nine games. Benoit Olivier one and done likely. I don't know if he'll be back next season with the players who are pushing for the NHL, but he gets a ring in his year with the Sharks. Two points plus 11 in 11 games from Kniezev, who was a big piece. Bystet, Bjorn fought. Linus Allmark ends with a 12-2-0 record, one shutout, 918 save percentage, 2.49 goals against average. I don't know what our goaltending tandem will be next season, because we also have Hornquist in the AHL who's going to be pushing, Torsten Hornquist, so well, that, that's yet to be seen. But for the moment, let's just enjoy what we have done. We're going to sim a little bit. Let's see if we can win the uh, Calder Cup down in the AHL. And then we'll be able to check out the awards and all that other good stuff. So let's sim a little bit more, and then we'll check that out. Game 7 Calder Cup Final. We take it, eh? We get the double. San Jose Sharks win the Stanley Cup, and the San Jose Barracuda win the Calder Cup. We'll have a little joint parade in San Jose 
absolutely wonderful. Love to see it. Let's check out the awards to end off the year. Then we'll sim towards the draft and call it a postseason. San Jose Sharks, you are Stanley Cup champions. Yeah, the Hurricanes won the Cup in 2023 and 2025. Gotcha. And they also made, yeah, that's their third Stanley Cup final appearance in five years. Beautiful. Individual awards. McDavid wins the Art Ross and the Hart. James Norris goes to Makar. Lady Bing to Kucherov. Calder to Michkov. Conn Smythe to Connor Bedard. Vezina to Thatcher Demko. Jennings to Cal Peterson. Masterton to Ryan Lindgren. Parise wins the Jack Adams. Look at that. Coach Zach Parise of the Flames wins the Jack Adams. Selkie, the Ryan O'Reilly Award, goes to Ryan O'Reilly. Ted Lindsay to McDavid. And Morris Richard to Kucherov. Down in the AHL. Any awards? Tom wins the equivalent of the Rocket Richard. Great. Uh, Twamala wins the equivalent of the uh, Conn Smythe. Lovely. And Hornquist wins the equivalent of the Jennings. Very nice. So some nice hardware down in the AHL. Not quite any in the NHL individual-wise, but I think we'll be able to sleep at night knowing that we have the Stanley Cup. I'm just very impressed. I hate to ever really toot my horn too much because it is a franchise mode that involves all the assistant general managers. But there are some decisions that I made on the fly that I'm extremely proud of. Signing Glass, signing Bushnevich, acquiring Lindgren, acquiring Lucius, uh, signing Drouet. I'm very pleased with how all of those moves panned out. And on top of being very proud of the team itself, I'm also very proud of how the team was built. It's easy to say, okay, Stanley Cup in 2027, your lineup is full of 90 overall guys on entry-level deals with all kinds of X-factors, line chemistry. No, there's not a single generated forward on our team, and our only generated players are Mats Rodin and Boris Kalinin, and Kalinin being someone who only joined us in the postseason. The other 16 skaters and two goalies on our team were all acquired through trade or through free agency and through it was only Connor Bedard through drafting so even though he was a drafted player it does hold to the possibility that this is a possible team in 2027 no crazy Hungarian medium franchise sniper out of nowhere this is a team that's made up of 95% of real world players five years in the future and I think there's something to be said about that and we can now head to the draft. I'm going to do a few draft interviews, make sure we uncover as much as we can. Seattle picks first, moving from 5-1. to one. Then Winnipeg, Detroit dropping 1-3. to three. That's tough. Picking via Florida. So Florida gave us their pick last year, and we picked um, fourth. And now this year, they gave their pick to Detroit, and they picked third. That's tough for a rebuilding team in Florida. I'll take care of all that. We'll check out player retirement first. Logan Couture, are you calling it a career, buddy? Yes, you are. Ovechkin also retiring at 1,820 points, 994 goals. Still an 87 overall. Giroud, Taze, Ben, Oshie, and of course, Logan Couture retiring with 901 points in 1,247 games. What a career for him. Going out with a Stanley Cup ring. Anyone else uh, retiring here in San Jose? No, nope, nobody else. Eberly, Carlson, Pacioretty, Bailey, a lot of old older players here. Yeah, okay. And goaltenders retiring is Brian Elliott calling it a career at the age of 42. Not even, eh? Bobrovsky retires. Quick, Allen, Jones. But Brian Elliott still out here. He'll be 43. All right. Good for you, buddy. Good for you. Ben, Oshi, and Ovechkin are all now coaches. Unfortunately that we don't get Couture in there. Coach retirements, anyone from San Jose? No, beautiful. I'll take care of some draft interviews here, some very interesting prospects. We see the first overall pick's gonna be a franchise player. So I'll do a bit of this just to uncover some other players and then we will get to the wrap up. All right, the interviews have been conducted, learned a little bit more information about the players we may be drafting come the off season. And now here we are at the 2027 draft. So to wrap it all up, let's look at the progress reports, the draft class, the contracts. We'll get some ideas heading into the off season. Of course, we're very excited to have won the Stanley Cup and now we're looking at, ahead to the 2027-28 season. And let's get into that dynasty territory ASAP. So we have, starting by overall, let's see, Bedard up to 91, Lucius 89, Bushnevich 89, Drouet and Hurdle and Eklund all at 88, Glass 87, amazing, Burkowski 87, he won't be coming back, Lind 86 still there, Lindell 85, Allmark 84, Rodin 84, uh, any other changes? I don't think I see any more, Bicep up to an 80, 
That's about it. In the system, let's sort by modifications here. Clean it up to a 79, of course. This guy, Christopher Whitney, at a 66. Uh, not much of, like, good growth, but not much of, like, NHL, keep a note on type of thing. Hornquist up to a 74. He's probably the closest one. Anybody else out there? No, not really much growth from the other guys. Tangay, um, Reed, not really any growth there from them, unfortunate. So, we'll see if any of those guys could try and think about pushing for a spot in the preseason come 2027-28. Headed into the offseason, I think we have quite a bit of money, quite a bit of money when it comes to the expiring deals. We'll be able to play with 31.3 million. Now, Burkowski would want, he would do 3 by 5.5 probably. Not a horrible deal actually, because his 1 and 2 year asks are big, but for a 3 year deal, I could see it. But where does he really fit? If we're going to sign him, where does he fit? Evan Bouchard, I'd like to sign him. We'll get him on an RFA deal. Yeah, we'll get him for something. Gru, do we bring him back? Question mark. It's a bit much for a fourth liner. I don't know. Eric Carlson would be wanting 4.9 for two years. So we get him for close to four. It's a lot of money for Carlson. We got him his ring. We probably just say we part from here. Kniazev, Pickering, they'll all get their deals. I think the defense is relatively understood for next season. Yeah, Bystet's going to probably be, be uh, in the 2 million. Yeah. Okay, looking at the goalies now, we see Allmark going to be needing a new contract after that. Bit. Yeah, he wants 3.6 now. He was happy to take 2. Now he wants 3.6, 3.8. Do we re-sign him with Lind uh, Lindbergh backing him up? Uh, we do have Hornquist in the system. We have Habashi that's going to need a contract. That's a tough question. It's a tough question. He, he, what did he do this season over in the uh, USA? Not great numbers, but as long as he continues to develop. Other unsigned players? No, no one with crazy, crazy growth. So thinking about what our roster would be at the, the start of next season... Bedard, Bushnevich, Lucius, first line, Drouin, Eklund, Hurdle, second line. The top six is still locked in my mind. Burkowski, Glass, Lind, is that still the third line? Cunning, Gru, and Bystet, is that the fourth line? And then you have whatever Kirk, Weisblatt, Tongay, Tuamala fighting for 13th forward, uh, Riley, that type of thing. Are we already content with the forwards? Question there. Next question, the defense. Can we still go Lindell, Rodin, Bouchard, Kniazev, Pickering, and Kalinin with Bjornfot as 7th D? Does that work? Well, actually, now that I think about it, we also have Kibi Haru, who's going to be needing to make the jump most likely. So if the top six next season is Kibi Haru, Kalinin, Lindell, Rodin, Bouchard, Kniazev, that leaves Pickering on the outside. So maybe one of these players move on. Maybe we trade the rights of Kniazev or something along those lines. Although he's been a great simulation player, so I'd prefer not to. I don't know. Someone with something has to give there. So those are all things to keep in mind. We do have a ton of money. A ton of money. 30 plus million. So it's not that we can't sign a big fish, but the, I'm not sure where the big fish would fit. Pending free agents may include the likes of Kucherov, Hughes, Nechas, McCann, Duchesne, Puliyarvi, many other high 80, even to the 90 overall type players. Defensively, Hughes, Gerard, Pesci, Carlo, Hedman, Montour, Graves, Grizzlick. Goaltenders, who may be there? Hart, Dostal, Merzlikens. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be signing a goalie. I think it's... I think Almar can probably come back. Uh, I'd say we probably re-sign him to a one-year type of thing. Had a crazy postseason. And the very last thing to do here will be to check out the draft class. Looking at the draft board, what picks do we have? We have our first, Boston's second, Florida, Washington, and Boston's third, and then other miscellaneous picks. So one first, one second, three thirds... I think there's a lot of good talent in this draft. Darcy Beck is similar to Mario Lemieux. That's going to be a crazy pick first overall for, who was it, Seattle? Hopkins, Pau, Gerard, elite players. After that, high top six. This guy's NHL ready. There's also this guy who's NHL ready, medium elite. Aside from that, no one is NHL ready. Everyone's like two, three, four years away. At the end of the draft here, picking at 32, all medium top nines. I would rather trade up a little bit to get a top 4 D or a top 6 forward. None of them are any more special than the other, I don't think. All of them are three years away. Or we could trade our first altogether. Or trade down. There's a lot of top 6s later on. 
a lot of medium top sixes later on in the draft as you see right here medium top six a bunch of them here in the second round uh, a lot of three bar medium elite players medium top 4d low elite guarantee there lease that guy sorting by potential and scrolling into the we see guaranteed medium elite goalie at 215 that's going to be great it's five years away but just good to get potential in the system medium elite goalie at 68 also five years away so not really worth it yeah i don't think anyone that we really have to say let's target it's just there's a lot of good options we have some picks and I think we'll have a fair enough draft. I think, I don't know if there's anything that really screams, we got to make sure we get this guy, aside from that goalie at 215. So ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The San Jose Sharks are your 2027 Stanley Cup champions. What a season from that change of Philip Lindbergh being the catalyst of it all. And similar to the Philadelphia Flyers series, winning the Stanley Cup in 2027, very interesting. So it took us five years, the five-year plan after 35 years of being an NHL franchise, five years of GM data and his team of assistant GMs, a Stanley Cup has arrived here in San Jose. Enjoy it. Soak up the offseason. Let me know what you're going to do with your day with the cup down in the comments, as well as your suggestions for what we should do in the offseason and how the, the team should look headed into 2027-28 when we will look to defend our Stanley Cup championship so thank you so much for taking the time to watch you've enjoyed it and you were on a roller coaster of emotions as i was be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already great time to do it in celebration franchise mode career simulations breaking news and analysis in the real world of hockey with all the news coming out in the nhl nowadays we had the bo horvat live stream the other day we had over 100 people in the chat it was a blast with the trade deadline coming up there's gonna be a lot more of those coming out so make sure you're subscribed to be made aware of all the breaking news and then join in for all the analysis of it i hope you enjoyed the episode let me know what you enjoyed most about our crazy stanley cup run unbelievable regular season and postseason so many things i'd want to say i'll leave it to all of you to just let it out in the comments section but first and foremost as always Thank you so very much for taking the time to watch and enjoy. I hope you did indeed enjoy it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again in the next one where we will look to build towards defending our Stanley Cup championship.